Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and I want to welcome you to our time of Bible study today. We'll be looking at Mark chapter 11, and if you're reading through the Bible, you would all, with us, you would also like to look at Psalm 131 and Judges chapter 11. All right. But today we're going to be looking at Mark 11, and here are some of the things that we should see in that study. The triumphal entry of Jesus. Jesus curses the fig tree. Jesus cleanses the temple. The lesson from the withered fig tree. Then the authority of Jesus challenged. And so we would like to look at all of these different things as we go through our study today. Let's go ahead and get started right away as we look at Jesus' earthly ministry uh, and his body here coming to an end. But of course, he is reigning, ruling and reigning in heaven today. But let's look at how the end of the time of Jesus on this earth came to an end. Remember, we're looking at it from Mark's uh, point of view here, as far as the Holy Spirit is pointing out, Jesus is like an ox. In other words, uh, he is serving God, the Father, and doing everything that God wants him to do, including going to the cross and giving his life for us as a ransom. All right, so let's go ahead and look at that. And we see, now when the they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a cold tide on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, <clears throat> the Lord has need of it and we'll send it back here immediately. <clears throat> and they went away and found a colt tied uh, at a door outside the street, and they united, untied it, and some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them, what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. Cloaks would be like coats today, on it. And he sat on it, and many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread <clears throat> leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, a blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. Now, here Jesus is offering himself to the Jewish nation. And of course, the religious leaders are the ones that rejected Jesus. Many of the people, the common people, accepted Jesus and would have taken him as their Messiah, even on other occasions and but it was important to God the Father that the nation 
decide if they wanted him. Jesus is a gentleman. Jesus allows for freedom of, well, freedom of religion, but freedom of choice. And of course, uh, he doesn't force anyone on, doesn't force himself on anyone. Even as when he was walking by on the water, uh, he would have walked by the boat if they hadn't invited him in. Same as here. He is offering himself on the very day that Daniel talks about. There's been studies done on this. I think Roberts is his name. Uh, but to the very day Jesus offered himself to the nation. And he even said that if you had known the hour that you're living in, the very time that you're living in, uh, but it's fulfilling a prophecy where he, the Messiah, will be cut off in Daniel and talks about. Now, when you get into a discussion of prophecy and what takes place, people, some people will say, well, see there, they were forced to do this. Uh, and so that's the way it turned out is because God predestined it to be this way. And then there's some truth to that, but then some will say, no, uh, this was totally of their free will. And there's some truth to that. And so we look at it from two perspectives. First of all, God the Father knew what they were going to do as a nation. He is not going to force himself on anyone. If you don't want to go to heaven, you don't have to go to heaven. But the alternative is not too good, is it? And uh, the same thing with if they didn't want to receive their Messiah as a nation, the religious leaders, then they didn't. And that is what we're going to see here, that uh, even though Jesus offers himself, the nation as a whole rejected him because of the religious leaders. Uh, there are 70 on the Sanhedrin, and I've mentioned this before, but the reason I mention this is because some people don't understand this. And those 70 rulers ruled Israel, even at that time under the Romans. And they said to crucify him. They were murderers. Now Joseph of Arimathea did not agree with this vote, and neither did Nicodemus. And they no doubt were no longer welcome, and they didn't want to be, no doubt, on the council of the Sanhedrin any longer. In fact, they helped take Jesus' body down from the cross. We'll see. Um, and John talks about that. So uh, they bring it. Now, in the other parallel passages, you'll see that uh, more details is that uh, Jesus was riding this donkey. He was not riding a, a white stallion, as sometimes the, the worldly leaders would do. And when Jesus comes back, he will do that. Uh, when he sets up his earthly kingdom, but he's waiting upon Israel as a nation to accept him. And uh, as we go through prophecy, you're going to see in just a short time, Jesus is going to explain also about when uh, in the future they will accept the Antichrist uh, that offers himself, Israel does, and uh, they make a covenant with the rest of the nations for seven years. But in the midpoint of that tribulation time, uh, Jacob's trouble it's called, uh, they will realize when the Antichrist stands up in the temple and opposes Jesus and the God of heaven and curses and blasphemes and mocks heaven, then the Israelites will know this is not, we've been tricked. This is not the, our Messiah. And then they go into mourning and they will re receive their Messiah. But at this time, they don't. And uh, so 
that's what we see and Jesus would go and this is the second time that he has cleansed the temple. He did that at the beginning of his ministry and then also at the end of his ministry. And sometimes people look at like something like this and oh well there's contradictions because there's different things that happen. No, there's no contradiction in the word of God. It's perfect. God has protected it down to us today. We believe in the inspiration of the word of God. We believe that God has protected up to us and then not one jot, not one tittle will pass away until all is fulfilled. Jot would be like, uh, we understand in Hebrew is a crossing of T and dotting of an I. In other words, the little uh, letters the, that have been added for understanding. and But then none of that, in other words, the point is, none of God's word is going to pass away. It's going to be fulfilled. And so Jesus uh, goes to the temple, cleanses it, and then he is moving quickly in the book of Mark. As we said, he is like that ox. He's a servant and following what the Father wants. So the next thing, <clears throat> as he's on his way, on the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree hmm, and leaf, it, uh, he went to see if he could find anything on it. <clears throat> when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Now this is, he's doing something that's very symbolic. And remember in scripture, you have like two rails on the railroad track. Uh, one side is the natural or the physical, and on the other side is the spiritual. Jesus did this to the fig tree because it was a picture of Israel. Uh, Israel that existed then would be destroyed. And in 70 AD, uh, Titus destroyed it. The Romans did, surrounded it and destroyed Jerusalem. And one of the things that they did was to destroy the temple. And uh, they did that to, uh, they burned it. And uh, in order to, get the uh, gold that was on the walls and so on. And as they did that, they pulled every stone apart, uh, getting to the uh, gold. And so uh, this uh, Israel, as they knew it, and all those leaders in 70 AD there that rejected Christ and many of the Jews themselves, two, over two million, I'm told, at that time, would be killed. Now, fortunately, a lot of the Christians had been, uh, because of persecution, they had uh, ran and moved away from Israel, and so not as many of them were killed during the time of the uh, Titus and when they take over. So they didn't receive their Messiah at this time, but because they didn't, there will be severe consequences, okay? And, this, and so this is a picture of Israel. The fig tree is a picture of Israel and uh, how they would be for 2,000 years, okay? It's been since uh, Israel came back to its land in, 40, uh, in 1947, and uh, so only recently has Jerusalem been uh, named as a, the capital again. So, and they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold those who, um, who bought in the temple. And he overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons and he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, it is, not, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer 
for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Okay. What they were doing was taking, they would have animals there uh, that could be used for sacrifices and so on, but at an exorbitant price. So the priests were supposed to check the lambs and see they had to be less than a year old. They have to be perfect. Uh-oh, they would say, oops, there's something wrong here. Look at this here. And uh, nope, it's not perfect. Going to have to buy another one. But you know what? We are we have them right here available if you'd like some. And of course, that's what they were doing. They were buying and selling uh, the sacrifices right there. And that was not acceptable to the Lord. And also, they were making it a place of business in the sanctuary. Now, sometimes kids and other people will like to sell something, but we ask them to please don't do it in the sanctuary just because of what Jesus said here. It should be a house of prayer, but they had made it a den of thieves because they were stealing, uh, adding money to that and actually doing business right there in the temple. And... Um, that was just not acceptable with God. God is a holy God, and he wants us to do things the way that he says to do them. So Jesus, uh, as I said, cleansed the temple at the beginning of his ministry and also at this time. Then, uh, as they were, as they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. It just died totally up like we have in the wintertime here. It looks like, and it's just, uh, but uh, Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And whatever you uh, stand praying, or whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Okay, so Jesus used this not only in the other um, parallel passages. Uh, he can use it in prophecy as far as the nation of Israel. And it's a picture of them uh, being destroyed after they had... Uh, uh, rejected as as they were going to reject the Messiah. And uh, also, he's using it as a picture of having faith in prayer. But be careful when you're praying. If you have something against somebody, make sure you go and you can they have something against you or you have something against them. Make sure you get that right between them and to forgive them. And I try to be careful if there's anything, anyone that um, I know that I haven't forgiven. I need to ask God's forgiveness um, or to forgive them myself. And so that's uh, what we should do as Christians and I believe it's very serious that he says that if you don't forgive others, neither will your Heavenly Father forgive you. And uh, so we need to do that. And of course, there was the parable of the man that was forgiven so much. And then he went out and started choking somebody else. Well, and so the, the king said that, you know, um, he would be divided in his and his portions given to others. Well, 
that's a picture of Jesus dying on the cross for all our sins. If we can't forgive somebody for a little bit that they owe us, or in other words, that they have offended him, and neither will God forgive us. So very serious here. And then also that um, you can have faith. Now, I don't believe God wants us to go around and you get to see the Christians all going around. Okay, uh, Mount Rainier, that's what we, one of the ones we have, we have many mountains in our area here, especially five mountains that we can see uh, from here at a short distance. And the thing is, okay, uh, Mount Rainier, I believe that you're supposed to be cast into the sea. No, I don't think that's the point he's making here. He's making the point that if there is a problem, there's something that we think is like a huge mountain that can't be changed, pray about it. I've had so many people say, oh no, it can never happen. And then with prayer, it does happen. And so uh, a matter of faith here and trusting the Lord and believing that he can do all things. All right. And then as we continue on, it says, and they came again to Jerusalem and he was walking in the temple and the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him and they said to him, by what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question, answer me. And I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? Answer me. And they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But shall we... Uh, but shall we say from man, uh, they were afraid of the people for they all held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, hmm, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Okay. So, uh, they would not even be honest, would they, with him about these things. They knew that he was from God, deep down in their hearts, no doubt, but because of their jealousy of his uh, many people that were following him, uh, they were evil in their hearts. They didn't want to know the truth. They were rejecting him because they were thinking, no doubt, oh, well, let's see. They even said, um, the high priest said that, um, which he made a prophecy that, don't you know that instead of the whole nation dying, uh, because they're thinking, well, if they were to accept uh, somebody like this as their leader, the Romans would come and destroy their nation. So they said, don't you know that it's better that one person die for the nation than that all of... Well, in one sense, that was a, a prophecy, wasn't it? Because Jesus would die for not only the nation, but for everyone in the world. And that uh, we can be saved through his blood as he died on the cross for us. And so we see that um, even though they did not as a nation receive him, he is going to die and rise again. Somebody says, well, what if he, uh, they had received him? Well, this is something the apostles were asking about. Well, isn't Elijah supposed to come? before the Messiah, and uh, Jesus said, Elijah did come, and they did with him whatever they wanted to do. In other words, uh, Elijah could have been uh, John the Baptist in taking the place of Elijah, in the stead of Elijah, the, the ministry of Elijah, and preparing the way uh, before the Lord. And John the Baptist did that. 
He said, prepare the way before the Lord. But because of the hardness of the leaders' hearts, especially, and of course, many of the people too, but many of them had received Jesus and believed that he was the Messiah. And so here, though, uh, they fulfilled prophet, prophecy unknowingly. Jesus said, if you had known your day, and if they had known that this is the very day when he came and offered himself, but because they rejected him, then he would go on, uh, he would die on the cross, but if he, they had received him, then uh, he would still have had to die, but then they as a nation could have accepted him. You see, there's free will. God gives people choices, and the nation was given a choice, and they did not receive him at this time. And that's something that we see in the future prophecy uh, from the parallel Gospels too about the tribulation and the great tribulation, the middle of the tribulation, uh, where they as a nation of Jews will accept him. Now, remember, even after the resurrection of Christ, did they accept him? No. You see, they could have accepted him as a nation, no doubt, even after the resurrection. But does God know what is going to happen? Yes. And so by his foreknowledge, all of this is prophesied to the nth detail. All right. And so we're going to go into the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ very soon. <sighs> Starting uh, tomorrow. Okay. Let's go to prayer. Father, we just thank you for this time that we've had together. And we pray now that you'll continue to speak to our hearts as we look at your word. Know that you are sovereign and that you needed to die for our sins, the sins of all the world. And that um, the religious leaders really fulfilled that in the sense that they rejected you. They fulfilled Daniel and the prophecies of the Old Testament and what they did, even though they didn't know it. And the same with Judas. And Lord, that um, we are being given a choice right now. What are we going to do with Jesus? Lord, I pray that anyone listening to this that has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, will receive him right now. And will return or repent of their sins, turn from their sins, and turn to Christ to be their Lord and Savior. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Lord bless you, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.